WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Sorry, we're late, Mr. Q. LOL. Place, opponent, universe, and they. I hear that music. WWE WrestleMania 26 ripped off Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith with that piece. You didn't think I noticed, did you? I just want to be able to get us to be shown in slow motion. Well, you'd be wasting your time because even John Morrison wasn't in slow motion. Ah, the Big Show's face has been covered by the Miz's U.S. title. First gave him the menu. He looked at it and said, I'll take it. That's like the 500th time that Jerry Lawler has ever used that joke about show. Not kidding. I lost count on how many times Jerry made that I'll take everything on the menu joke. And Thorazin! Secretly, John is addicted to our truth considering he kicked show which caused them to nearly land on truth. If you were trying to help your partner, that wasn't the best way to do it. Oh. Oh, it show making sure that our truth was thrown into the ring post as softly as possible. Congratulations to the WWE Universe. Why? What did they do? We don't care which one of us wins this match as long as Randy Orton loses. We don't care who loses when we actually do care during the match itself, cliche. It's going to be basically a two-on-one handicap match if you ask me. Funny, didn't Michael Cole just say that exact same thing like 30 seconds ago? Again, this is a two-on-one assault. That's like the only thing the commentators can come up with these days, ain't it? I think I just lost count on how many times they've noted that this is a two-on-one assault in a triple threat match. Oh. Um, nope. Ted DiBiase had a head start there. As he goes for the cover, yeah. hooks the leg and well, so much for we don't care who wins as long as Randy Orton loses, am I right? Perhaps a future WrestleMania main event right here, Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase. WWE creative is too stupid to even consider that idea. But I don't believe we've ever seen this! Um, yes you have. Remember Randy doing this exact same thing to John Cena and Triple H at WrestleMania two years prior? Don't lie to us, Michael. Counters Ted DiBiase is a perfect example of a wrestler who can actually sell moves in an awesome way. That was an awesome RKO. Will be forever. Excuse me. How the hell can Vicky Guerrero hear the crowd if she's far off in the backstage area? See right there? The fact that we have sudden teleportation proves that this was a pre-taped segment and further supports my question on how the hell Vicky could hear the crowd earlier. Well, now I'm disturbed. God damn it, it fucking sucks when your pyro malfunctions at WrestleMania. There have been five Money in the Bank matches and this superstar has competed in every one. Except for the one at WrestleMania 23. Get your facts right, Matt. This came the last person to enter back-to-back -back Money in the Bank ladder matches. What? Are you kidding me right now? Matt Stryker confused CM Punk with Kane. At this time, Kane had never even won a Money in the Bank ladder match, so could he have been the last person to win back-to-back -back Money in the Bank ladder matches? Gonna have to give that a double sin. Drew McIntyre gonna go through the back door yet Whoa. again. Apparently, climbing a ladder to grab the briefcase, which is the objective, might I add, is considered going through the back door. So basically, that means everybody who's trying to get that briefcase is going through the back door. Michael Cole is an idiot. Here comes Kofi. Oh. Aha, you tripped. Well, that could have taken a Ow, my hands! A simple turnaround, a couple of steps, and Evan Bourne could have won this match. Instead, he decides to waste the chance by delivering Airborne. It, oh! it took Matt Hardy three times before Evan could cooperate with that properly. Jack, get your hand off my ass! Into a oh! Oh. Kane nearly killed the people in the front row. Look at that! A pair of stilts. Well, I'm removing three cents for that innovation of the ladder stilts by Kofi Kingston. Will you stop calling this going through the back door? The objective of this match is to climb a ladder and unhook that prize above. That's not going through the fucking back door. Double sin. First Matt Hardy's gonna do it! Second Matt Hardy's gonna do it! Matt had the briefcase for a good 15 seconds and could have won right there, and in my personal opinion, should have won at that point. And Kane setting the ladder up as well! The ladders were already set up. I think you meant to say Kane climbing up the ladder as well. Oh, a twist of fate from the top of the ladder! That was clearly Christian's reverse DDT move that he does. That was not a twist of fate at all. Jack Swagger. We've been sitting here for over 30 seconds just waiting for Jack Swagger to unhook the briefcase. It's that one moment where you believe someone's going to interfere due to the wrestler taking forever to unhook the prize. But Jack took forever simply because he sucks at unhooking briefcases. I'm gonna beat you so viciously. The king of kings will never be the same again. 
Seamus is actually right. Even though it happens a month later at Extreme Rules, Seamus was actually correct by saying the King of Kings will never be the same. Because after their battles, Hunter's full-time wrestling career was destroyed. So that's actually quite the shocking fact about his statement. Ooh, pyro that we can't even see. Rolling out and stop Bad barricade. Guys, notice that the Ace of Spades it's just because this theme is played by Motorhead, isn't it? That you brought up the Ace of Spades, which by the way is one of Motorhead's best songs. Tie your mother down. What? Hell to the no, man. We've been talking about the veteran. No, 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 no. Well, look who's no selling two bro kicks in a row. I wonder what's next for Triple H. He takes a year off and pretty much stops wrestling full time. Honestly, why would Rey Mysterio even bring his children to the ring knowing full well that CM Punk is lurking close by? <laughs> oh my kill switch! I can lead you to a better place! So you intend to kill us? Whoever's the owner of that Serena girl hair to cover your face sign failed to realize that Serena is one of the hottest females in WWE, especially with a shaved head. I'm taking your root for Ray. Well, you're not supposed to root for anyone, so what does it matter? CM Punk seriously oils the hair on his chest? Was he intentionally trying to discuss this all? <laughs> that was one of the most hilarious entrance fails I have ever seen. Rey Mysterio had to end up climbing out of the stage instead of getting sprung up in the air. That Rey Mysterio's knee was surgically repaired not long ago. That was three years ago. Do you qualify that as not long ago? No! The ring post is a dick to CM's punks. Like the to that. Yeah. Did you hear that? No, we're deaf. Well, there's a great balance in that. Damn, I'm removing a sin for that awesome move. Yes! He's done it! Bullshit fast count by the referee, showing favoritism here. Despite this being one of the most hyped up matches on the card tonight, even I saw beforehand that this was not going to be a great match. Sorry, but this feud waited way too long for its culmination. I will admit though, it did have one of the best storylines of this year's mania. Great hype, poor match. Come on out! Vince McMahon's attempt to purchase the Hart family. This is pathetic. Why? Attempting to purchase a family away from someone is something Matt Stryker is okay with and doesn't consider pathetic. It's the money. The way Matt said the money. Get the money, put it in the bank. I'm just gonna go ahead, get this over with, and count 11 sins for the 11 minute squash fest that is this match. Brett versus Vince is honestly a match I can easily forget because there was literally nothing memorable about this match. Brett has been wanting to do this for 13 years. Do I seriously have to do a bonus round for every time Michael Cole mentions that Brett has waited for 13 years? years being a Does Bruce Hart not realize that this is a no holds bar match? Why is he counting for Brett to let go of Vince when he's on the ropes? Here tonight at his creation. Look at that, even Vince is secretly reminding Bruce that he's not supposed to do any countouts considering it's a no holds barred match. Mr. McMahon agreed to this match, not under these conditions. Excuse me, Matt, but Vince is the one that made these new conditions to the match. Who else brought up the idea of a lumberjack match with the Hart family? An international object, that's not allowed! Matt Stryker has also forgotten that this is a no holds bar match. Seems like everyone had been forgetting about that. Also, Vince was the one that brought out the tire iron and you were applauding it, you hypocrite. Instead of locking in the sharpshooter and ending this, Brett decides to continue the onslaught and bore us even more with his squash match. Brett is addicted to Vince's McMahons. No holds barred. Commentator constantly reminds us that this is a no holds barred match as if we are stupid cliche. Then again, Matt forgot that it was a no holds barred and so did Bruce. Brett taking a timeout. Is this 13 chair shots for 13 years? Actually, it was 18 chair shots. To the fan on Mr. McMahon's grand. Brett and Bruce taking turns stepping on Vince. It's great to see Celebration Pyro for the attendance announcement, but in this case, you still can rarely see shit considering it's still bright and sunny outside. You think you know me? Ah, Edge's theme didn't even wait for Chris Jericho to enter the ring before it hit. Would you do that to your brother? I don't have four sisters, so... <laughs> okay, that was a little weird. Jerry asked Matt if he would turn on his brother, and Matt's response was, I don't have four sisters. Since when did Jerry mention sisters? Attempted copyright infringement. Six oh, that spear counter into the code breaker was an awesome moment to this match and really brought up the intensity. Great work from these two legends. Chip is gonna get disqualified. Oh. Gotta... Referee knocked down a crucial point of match cliche. Oh, this match was well done and a great finish to it too. 
Post match assault. Despite me not agreeing with post match assaults, I admit that was a great spirit to the barricade. Previously on WrestleMania 26, impromptu matches. Well, that was a little weird. Gail Kim looks to tag in Kelly Kelly, yet Kelly refuses and tells her to tag in Mickey James instead. What gives her that? The women's we all know that the only reason that all these divas are trading finishing moves on each other is because they ain't getting involved in this match whatsoever anyway. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> you failed. <laughs> Eve Torres forgot that she wasn't even the legal diva in the match by going for the pin. <laughs> oh, a hog splash. Fuck off with the fat jokes. But yeah, that was pathetic. <laughs> Vicky can't even pin anyone properly. You do this for money. I do this because I love it. Jeez, I just now realized something. I think I'm like John Cena myself, and Batista is the representation of 95% of the biggest YouTubers on the site. They do it for money. I do it because I love my creativity, and I prove how much I love my fans. I can never watch that and not remove five sins for the amazing work by the Air Force drill team. No one evokes as much emotion versus John Cena. No one evokes blah 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 universe blah 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 John Cena does cliche. With the switch, and then the blow. David attacks John from behind, which somehow sends John sailing backwards instead of forward. Wrong way, Cena. Meanwhile, in the nosebleed section of the stadium, reaches out for the bottom rope. This referee is an asshole. He tells John to release the hold, then proceeds to step on Dave's hand while it's on the rope. Wow! Look at this! John Cena's strength never ceases to amaze me. Well, except when it does. But this moment is an example of how surprising it can be to lift Dave up like that. Do you seriously have to headbang every single time you yell STF, Michael? I can see you doing that. It is so good! Hell yeah, no greater feeling than shutting up your haters. For months, I can't believe it's gonna happen. We can't believe this match is gonna happen because we already seen it. Shawn Michaels would test the issue. And that's why I This promo, the story, and the music all fit well together for this rematch and I'll remove a few sins for it too. <laughs> Copyright infringement early on, eh? There are many people that say that this match tops their first encounter at WrestleMania. Why? Just because Sean's career ended? That was at the end. Nevertheless, I know this match could have topped it. Unfortunately, it was right there, not even a minute into the match, that Undertaker had legit injured his leg, and that took away any chances of this topping their first match. Sean prevented a chance of another great moment with Undertaker's dive. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away. It's the motherfucking Undertaker, how else? I'll admit that tombstone pile driver on the floor was a surprising moment that caught me off guard. And it was awesome too, no denying that. Michael, how did you not see Sean counter that? If there's anyone who's in deep, deep trouble, it's the Undertaker. Patience here. I believe Undertaker said I'm gonna end this thing right here, right now. Just in case you guys thought Undertaker said, did you remember to fry the chicken properly and barbecue the ribs? <laughs> Shawn Michaels' foot is strong with the force to be able to kick Undertaker in mid-air. Oh <laughs> what should have been an epic final moonsault for Shawn Michaels ended up being a situation where he puts himself and Undertaker's foot through the table. Maybe Undertaker should have been lying the other way. Watch it, sweet <laughs> Now what do you bet this would have worked if Undertaker had actually been put through the table properly? Try to try. Oh, no. You're shocked that he kicked out, Michael? His kick out of the Tombstone pile driver last year was a lot more shocking, considering he went through more punishment on that night. One year later, of course we expect that to happen again. Uh, Sean, is that really necessary for you to be grabbing Undertaker right there? A jumping tombstone pile driver is what you call intense, scary, and just freaking epic. What a way to end this match. It wasn't nearly as good as their first match, but it was a great final match for Shawn Michaels nonetheless. And I'll give my respects by deducting 26 sins for 26 years of Shawn's career. Another piece of irony that this is the 26th WrestleMania as well. The referee's look on his face pretty much says, holy shit, this is the second career that's ended by my counting. I drive my kids nuts in three weeks. <laughs> How very true. How very true. 